why, why don't they feel that non-dual experience? Now, obviously, you ask the question, how can one experience it? There is the long route, and then there is the longer route. Okay? The latter one I will tell you first. The longer route is that you've really got to purify yourself. Um, imagine a glass of water which has got salt dissolved in it and it's got some pebbles sitting at the bottom, some particles of sand and other things. Now, that glass of water, that water is not really drinkable. But the water doesn't know it. That's the tragic, that's the tragedy. Water in the glass doesn't know that it's not drinkable. Now, if you start pouring pure water in that glass, eventually there will come a moment all the pebbles, the sand, the saltness, the, the, the saline, the, will all flush out. And if you keep pouring gently, eventually, without emptying the glass, there's going to be a moment when it's full of fresh water. Imagine the same glass, and you unload a bucket into it of fresh water. The glass will fall apart. I mean, it'll just topple, and it'll be empty, and the fresh water will also be wasted. What I'm trying to say is, it's going to be a gentle process if it has to work. Otherwise, you will end up with a lot of mess and nothing usable. And when people talk about, for example, that touch, that Shakti part, A, everybody has a different experience, and B, everybody ought to have different experience, and C, the person transferring the energy must know how much and what kind of energy can I transfer in the recipient. We don't want to create more mess. Instead, the objective is to purify and to flush out any impurities. Now, the longer route is to purify yourself, to rid yourself of your negativity, self-doubt, fear, phobias, um, anxieties, and the rest. And it's not easy. Because you may arrive at a moment in time when you will feel, I've really got it all worked out. I'm now calm. I am composed. I'm so pure. <laughs> there is no jealousy. Nothing can rattle me. Nobody can shackle me. And just then, <laughs> there might be just one tiny message from, from somebody, you are shit. And that's it. <laughs> and, and have all the things you, th you were so convinced you had conquered um, just split away. The longer route is you've got to purify yourself. The long route is with sustained self-inquiry, which was the path of the Vedanta, and particularly Advaita scriptures, and uh, duly demonstrated as well as practiced and championed by many, including Ramana Maharishi, who said, who am I? Am I a man, a woman, which, is, which can be questioning, affirmative, or eliminative, if there's such a word, or negative, if you see what I mean. In, in, in the questioning form, you will ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? Who in me is asking this question? Who in me is listening to the answer? Who in me is actually paying attention to the answer? Who in me is channeling that attention? Who is that one thing? What is that thing in me that's talking right now? And is it the same thing that's making sense of what I'm saying or is it something else? And it's a beautiful way of shedding the layers. Because if you keep asking yourself this question, you will, you will come to a point where you will realize, I am nothing but pure consciousness. I am nothing but the supreme 
not himself because that immediately represents duality. And the affirmative side is, I am everything. I'm a man, at some point in time, in some life, I, will, I would have also been a woman. I'm a goat, I'm a puppy, I'm this, I'm that. You could be all those things. I'm the stone, I'm the sun, I'm the moon, I'm everything. And then the negative, I am not a man, I'm not a woman, I'm not a father, I'm not a mother, I'm, I'm not these things that these labels have come to define me. If I am not those things, then who am I? What am I? So that, with sustained self-inquiry, you... The reason I called it beautiful and amazing, a sort of a kind of, uh, I don't know, an umbrella of peace, and a parasol of peace you start to carry around. You kind of get insulated from um, the vagaries of time and the vicissitudes of, of emotions and so on. You kind of draw yourself inward with this inquiry, and it is impossible to experience non-duality without first really going inward. In your inner world are all the answers you seek. And as I've said earlier as well, that was the classic method Socrates would adopt. When somebody would come to him, he would ask a question in return, and they would answer, and he would ask a question in return. And this process will keep on going, and ultimately the person will come up with the answer. And Socrates will say, I would say, look, this was always in you. I did not give you this answer, you arrived at this answer. Many years ago, there was this clipping from a Hindi movie I saw. There was a, an actor in it called Paresh Rawal, I think. So this guest came to his home, visited him, and said, Chai lenge? So he said, Kuch pienge? Pienge? Kya pienge? Thanda ya garam? Smele kuch garam? Chai ya coffee? Kuch bhi pila do nahi? Chai ya coffee? Smele chai pila dijiye. Black tea? Ya with milk? Smele chalo dood dal dijiye. Gai ka ya bhaes ka? Smele koi bhi dal do nahi? Gai ka ya bhaes ka? Smele gai ka dal dijiye. Chini? So he keeps on going on these, these questions that the other person just faints. <laughs> Somebody else walks in and says, Inko kya hua? What happened to this guy? He says, itne prashne puchhi, apni mein gir <laughs> I asked him so many questions that this person fell in his own eyes. And it's, uh, it's one of those things that the one who can hold on to a line of inquiry will arrive at marvelous conclusions. Usually what happens when a distracted mind takes up self-inquiry, they get distracted very rapidly. Who am I? Oh, I'm the soul. Who am I? Who am I? What was that guy saying to me the other day? <laughs> the, didn't he know who I am? <laughs> so <laughs> and then that distraction just not only distorts, but totally annihilates your actual process of self-study and self-reflection, which is a part of self-inquiry, which leads to, as I said, great insights if somebody can stay on that one thought or train of thought, which requires very superior concentration, which cannot be built unless somebody consciously decides to champion the art of concentration, which requires brief periods of, or short periods of good quality meditation. And that is why I called it the long route. Because it's not as simple as, let's sit down today and ask ourselves, who am I? And the person inside you, who the hell are you? I'm still, <laughs> I still don't know. So to avoid the dialogue, it needs to be a very carefully uh, controlled narrative, a monologue. The moment it's a dialogue, you will get distracted. So that's my answer. <laughs>
I hope you got your 